Well, good evening, YouTube. I think we're about, we're looking at the last week in July now, around the 23rd, 24th, around there. Middle of the night, anyways. We're starting the night out at my veggie table. Very important to have a veggie table every day. <laughs> I still have these clones for my girl. She still hasn't come to get them. They're getting kind of big. They're looking fantastic. Happy, happy girls. And then my broccoli and cauliflower is doing great. Nice, shiny, waxy leaves. That's healthy for broccoli and cauliflower. My carrots, on the other hand, I've got some wimpy stalks in here that keep falling over, and then I've got some big, healthy stalks that look like they're growing some good root vegetable. We'll see. In there, way back there, I'm still waiting on these flowers to start showing some sign of budding, but we're really not seeing much from them. Over here, we have some really lovely cantaloupe plants that transplanted a whole lot better than I was expecting. Now, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing wrong with my tomatoes, but they seem to be, I seem to be getting a lot of, um, this happening where the leaves just curl up on me and that's it some of them recuperate like this one looking beautiful this one starting to look really nice these two both starting to recuperate a little bit but I don't know why the leaves are curling up I need to get them transplanted into some bigger pots maybe I'll do that tonight also have a couple things going on out here that I might not... Wow, that's one thirsty dog. Wow, Penny Lane, at least she's not barking. <laughs> um, we've got a couple of Durban poison stems sitting in water here. Um, the Crown Royal, this is the one I... Um, this is the Crown Royal that I rooted in water, and once the roots, once it started rooting in the water, I put it in soil, and it just, boom, took off. Beautiful little plant. Really happy with it. Oh, I spoke too soon about Penny Lane and the barking, didn't I? Okay, I've got more here to show you, but I've got to take the dogs out. All right, so a couple of other things I wanted to show you. Um, I've entered a solo cup challenge on um, the forum on ilovemarijuana.com and, or ilovegrowingmarijuana.com. Yeah, that's it, ilovegrowingmarijuana.com. Their forum, I joined the solo cup challenge and these clones are it. Penny, please. These, um, now this is kind of a, a little bit of an experiment I'm doing. I wanted to see what would happen if you took some lower larfy stems from the bottom of an autoflower when it was halfway through flowering and see if I can get it to, um, I don't know, monster crop at least into a, a big little, well, not a big bud, but into a uh, an actual full-size bud. So I, I'm not sure if I'll actually get anything out of this. This is just kind of an experiment. Having fun with it, you know? Instead of throwing it out, let's see what I could do with it. Another experiment I'm doing here. Ah, and it's going well. 
Um, this is my Coca-Cola bottle experiment. I took um, a little peat pot with my soil and I popped a, a germinated seed in there and yeah, I was gonna see now I, I open up every day or so uh, every few hours or so and um, sometimes that this cap isn't on tight um, to let some air in and yeah I just wanted to see if I could use an old beat up piece of coca-cola garbage to be a little pretend hothouse for a marijuana seedling. We're gonna see how that goes. <laughs> Over here, I'm looking at needing to build a bit of a trellis here for this hash plant. As you can see, recovered really well from the skinning I gave her. She's uh, stretching out really well, but um, I'm still adjusting the nutrients. They suggest pouring the nutrients directly into the tank and then adding the water, but I'm finding every time I do, I'm giving, the, the tomatoes love it, but I'm giving the pot plant nutrient burns. So next time I'm going to mix the nutrients into the water and fill up the tank that way. All right, let's head to the grow room and see what's uh, going on in the closet. Oh, before I go, I wanted to show you my potatoes. Check this out. Um, all I did was buy some potatoes, leave them in the bag for a month, cut off the gnarly um, eyes, like just a chunk of potato and the gnarly eyes. I buried them here in this pot. You bury them about inch, inch and a half loosely in soil. Moisten the soil, keep it fairly moist, not like drowning or anything. And then um, as the tops come up to the soil, you wait until they turn green and then you bury them again. So I'm giving them, they're almost level with the lip. So tomorrow I will be refilling, adding some more soil to this raising the lip up some. And this is one of those groovy potato bags that has the Velcro window. So when the fruit is ready to be harvested, I will just be able to stick my fingers in under them. <laughs> it just sounds so, so wrong in so many ways, but I will. I'll be able to stick my hand up in the, under them potatoes and steal their fruit without destroying the plants, that means they will continue to fruit. And I'll be able to get several harvests from one, one grow. I'm looking forward to that. In this pot over here, we have a couple beans that tried to live. We have one little um, broccoli that is trying to live. And we also have a bunch of our baby potatoes, baby seed potatoes that we got from our outdoor grow. So we're hoping to, to see some greenery from these in the next couple of days. Gotta keep it spritzed. I don't like to soak my potatoes You soak them, that's when they start to rot. That's no good. That's when you get, um, yeah, that's when, when you get root rot and it kills off your plant. So what you want is just to keep the soil lightly moistened with a spritzer a couple times a day if you can. That's how you keep them happy. Not, you know, sit here spritzing for an hour. You don't want to super saturate that topsoil. You want it to still be loose. There we go, just like that. All right, um, I wanted to, uh, yeah, take you to the, the closet now. I'll be 
We'll be in there in a second. Hi. Oh, let me turn my light intensity down a little bit. Make it a little easier on my poor camera to adjust. <laughs> All right. So my Lamb's Breath Auto over here, I wanted to show off because um, she is looking really, really pretty. The buds are, I mean, she's a small plant, but the buds are really starting to thicken up and and add some bulk. Um, they've stopped growing this way and they're growing this way, which is exactly what I want at this stage. Um, in the next, uh, I'd say week, maybe two, we're going to be looking at harvesting her. Um, now, with this being the Jack Herrera strain, it uh, sometimes runs as long as 11 weeks. So, uh, we could look at up to even like five to six weeks in flower. So, um, I, I, I don't expect to harvest this one for another month. But, um, already... The buds are, are are thickening. They're still growing up, but this is a, a bit of a shrubbery plant. So um, it's ideal for growing in uh, an indoor situation. I had it kind of stunted because both of these were in one gallon pots for way too long. Um, this is the pot that I redid while the uh, <laughs> while the plant was actually in it, and I found that the trauma of me manipulating the plant and actually sewing this these these bags together that's actually one two I think three bags or three and two and a half bags put together to create this <laughs> and yeah it it suffered this one was in a in a single gallon for way too long she was in her, her already into her first week of flower and unfortunately the single gallon was only half full like like the, this the, the, the pot was folded in half there was like this was like basically um what the seed started in <laughs> and we had never grown auto plants auto flowers before so they had no idea about the not supposed to transplant but honestly it was worse to it would have been worse to leave her in the single gallon than because as soon as I put her in the bigger pot she really came back to life she really uh responded to the training and i'm gonna get some beautiful marijuana not very much but some really nice pot out of this oh i'm really looking forward to smoking it um my crown royal over here i just earlier today came through and Soft topped. I don't usually soft top. I usually wait and hard top down um, two to three nodes from uh, from the end in order to get the thicker stems. But I wanted to. This is such an aggressively growing strain. I thought I'm just going to give some um, soft tom topping and fimming a try in here and see how she responds. My wedding crasher down here, doing really nice. This is another um, very small uh, plant, <laughs> but um, she's already showing pistols. She's female. I've got um, the stems that I want to grow out lollipopped, and I have been mostly just manipulating her a lot, um, twisting the stems, giving them a good um, chiropractic treatment every few days, making sure I come in and rub off any 
new um, new leaves that try to come up in the old node sites. And yeah, I, oh, I wanted to mention about my autoflowers. They have really, really, really responded well to the dehumidifier. I didn't think I was going to see a response so quickly, but in the last 24 hours, these buds have noticeably bulked outwards. You can tell they're no longer fighting to breathe and they are now working on fruiting, which is exactly where I want them. I'm so happy. This dehumidifier was uh, a, a long choice because I kept coming to the Peltier models and I, 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 I kept... I, it, lower price range, but you're not going to get the, the kind of immediate results that you get with a compressor style. I managed to find a cheap, small compressor style. It probably won't last very long. But it got here in under four days from the night I ordered it, and it's doing wonders. It's already pulled out, like, uh, nearly three liters of water in the last uh, day and a half. I'm super, super, super happy with her. Right over here, it's a TCL. Picked it up at Walmart, 200 bucks plus taxes. Great little machine. The only issue I have with it is there's no method to turn off the LED lights up here. They're very, very dim and they're on the green spectrum. On the blue spectrum, actually, they're, they're really, really dim. But I do have a plan. I have some lovely um, foam I'm going to be putting over top of the the buttons that, that light up so that while my photo, photo periods are fruiting, I don't have this pinhole causing uh, a light uh, a light problem. I'm also going to be uh, having to refinish up here and buy um, get some get a bar uh, not buy but get a bar up here across to hold the, the tarp up. Um, uh, it, it's a, it's a double, it's a double door, so I have the security of being able to, um, open my closet door without, um, affecting the grow room. So, um, I can have a access to all my grow materials, which I keep in here. And I also wanted to show you this nifty new toy. I picked up from Indoor Growing Canada. It is the Rainmaker and it's a, a three gallon multi-purpose hand pump. You just give it a few pumps by hand and you use it. To water your plants. It's great for delivering compost teas, nutrients, anything that you're doing. Um, also, it's great for washing your dog. I took it outside because Penny Lane just simply would not <laughs> get in the bathtub. So I took my, my new rainmaker outside and Washed my dogs with it. It took a while. It's not a, a super high-powered pump. It's very low pressure, and it come. You can change, change the nozzle spray, and but it comes out sufficiently fast, and is very easy for getting into hard-to-reach garden spaces. Very handy. And not and not overly pricey. It was like fifty dollars. Really, really well worth it, honestly. Just a trip to the groomers costs usually uh, fifty dollars a dog, so um, I'm saving money right there. All right, I wanted to show you what's going on with my mainline projects. 
put my wand away here, sorry. Now this one is uh, a random female, and as you can see, she is ready to be topped down to this node. And the next time you see her, all of this big growth will be gone, and you'll notice that Pretty much within days of topping, this growth down here exploded big enough for me to consider topping down to there now. Like, and that, that's, that's been within like 72 hours. Now this one over here, not really pleased with how the nodes are developing. They're just wimpy and slow and not really going anywhere and I've been chiropracting the heck out of this and doing everything I can to try to keep her supple and moving and I topped her down these particular scents I, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm just gonna cut them off and just work on these two branches. I I know it's a a long spread for just uh, for just the two sites, so I might um, I might instead of um, instead oh I've got an idea instead of continuing on train uh, mainlining it maybe I should do um, kind of like a cross like a a low stress training where I train these down, these long ones here, down along the pot. Ooh, now that's going to be pretty. I'm going to try that. That's another random female. I have no idea what the genetics are on this. And she is so, so healthy. She really responded well to being topped. My other little hash plant, these are... Um, considered like dwarf plants like the hash plants are, are generally like three and a half to four feet max so yeah this one was my little mutant that like um, the, 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 the calyxes literally died inside not calyx sorry the um, I can't remember that the name for those first initial um, leaves that that the round ones that happen before those first serrated ones yes i can't remember the name of them um bef those died inside the shell of the seed i man used a, a razor to slit the the shell off but i noticed there was still like a, a sleeve over top of the 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 top over top of of where the, the leaves were trying to spread. So I, I managed to pull that sleeve off and um, leaves actually managed to develop. I was, I was really blown away. <laughs> and let's see. Um, Yeah, the first one I said was a random female. That's actually my Durban Poison. Thought so. Those nice big fat sativa. Oh, well, no, Durban Poison is most of it mostly is mostly a sativa hybrid, but these have got really nice thicker um, um, leaves. Duh, really nice uh, thicker style leaves. So I'm I'm interested in seeing. Uh, what phenotype she turns out to be. Um, this one here is the other random female that I I have growing. And I, she's really growing strangely. Like this side of the plant is growing at exactly the same rate. Very um, steady but slow. Now this side is growing a little bit faster and much faster. This one here has about as much vegetation on this one stem as all these others do combined. 
So I'm not sure exactly how um, if mainlining is going to work with this plant. Um, I've already got the initial split and the secondary. We're down. We're up to four tops, and um, she's pretty much ready to be top down. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, in fact, oh geez, it's been like 25 minutes. I'm still chatting on. So I'm going to leave you guys go. Peace and love. Don't forget, hit the button, subscribe. Don't forget about the co uh, contest. Uh, I will uh, try to link a description I will try to make a link in my description of this video to the last video, which is the video that describes the contest. Oh my god, did that make any sense at all? <sighs> I've been, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've had a really good day. I hope everybody else is having a wonderful day, is enjoying their gardens as much as I am. Have fun, experiment, try things out. The worst thing that can happen is you waste a little bit of time and the plant dies. <laughs> That's the worst. So, yeah, have some fun. See what see what's new, what you can do. I'm really, really super looking forward to starting to see people's ideas. Um, if you want to chat with me, uh, check me out on Instagram and if you haven't got any ideas for for uh, getting involved in the contest, but you want to be involved, just uh, contact me on Instagram or via my email, and uh, I, I'd love to have a chat with you and help you come up with, with uh, an easy-to-do idea, and then it's just up to you to use your creativity for... Um, the aesthetics, I don't know if it, you might be more of a person who's into making things look pretty rather than things, building things from scratch. Well, try to play towards your talents. And my puppies need some attention, so good night and peace and love. Keep your days lit, your nights on fire. What's that, Penny Lane? What's that, sweetheart? Did you have a bath today? You're looking... Oh, yes, you're looking so shiny. Oh, what a pretty girl. No, we don't come in the... Oh, yes, he's such a pretty girl. Didn't she have a bath today? Yeah, is that your shower? What a good girl. Oh, my. I apologize. I don't mean to be uh, wasting everybody's time here. I'm just so pleased to uh to be sharing this with you guys peace and love bye